every day that goes by where there is no negotiations, there's no secession of fighting, Bunches it's going to get worse. To How Kharkiv is resisting Russia's invasion. Let's take a look. New Vice video just dropped. This is central Kharkiv and there are streets that have been completely destroyed like this all over the city. This is a region that has close cultural ties to Russia. It's a Russian speaking city. And this is what Russian bombs have done to this area. The fighting has started to intensify. Again, we can hear a lot of explosions throughout the day. Most of the civilians have now moved underground or they I tried to find out why Hassan is so disliked, but it basically came down to he's a commie douchebag. Yeah, welcome to America, where that's enough for someone to just like have a tremendous amount of disdain for you. I know that there are timestamps. Do you not see it? Uh, Bido, who sent the video, gave me the timestamp, so I put it in the search bar here so I can easily access it. Uh, yes, there's a lot of graphic footage in here, I know. Completely. This is a business center, and there are buildings like this that have been destroyed everywhere you go. What is this? Bela Slushba Bespeki. Sto is Sarno Uva de Oblast. Or Paetum Munya Nogi Pohadisha, Taisi, Harashumilia de Jale, Yamago i Harasho i Striliat, i Tagdali to Padomne. So Putin says that this is a special operation, not a war. What do you say about that? <laughs> Fuck him. He says, where is that fucking, excuse me, localized strike? One of the most beautiful European cities is being destroyed. It's showing the... Uh... Russian forces swept towards Kharkiv in the first days of fighting, destroying the local government building. Wait, there is no TOS here. I don't know why you guys were saying there's TOS here. What the fuck? I don't think there is. The sand rocking with you. These timestamps might not be correct. Across the region, hundreds are thought to have been killed so far. But weeks later, bodies are still being found in the rubble. And rescue workers believe that there's a body of a woman who's a grandmother that is still on the fourth floor and they're trying to get to that today. The reality is that it's believed there are many more people dead than the official figures claim because there are so many people who are... Bro, what the fuck is going on with this the dude? Jesus Christ. Okay, hold up, hold up. I'll, I'll look at the timestamps from building being bombed, lots of dead bodies, 415 to 540. Okay. Uh, Kakuga Kera, what the fuck? Not even close to fuck Asshole. Putin, is that what they're saying? Okay, um, all of this is, remember, Kharkiv is also, once again, and I've saw, I said this before when they were bombing it, Kharkiv in and of itself is a city that is not expressly anti-Putin, or wasn't, rather, expressly anti-Russia or anti-Putin. Certainly, that has changed since uh, this wonderfully brilliant strategic action by uh, the 5D chess master, Vladimir Putin himself. You know, if it wasn't before, it is certainly now. According oh. to Vice, bro, you're crazy. This is what they're doing something, to a something. city known as a pro-Russia city. The most pro-Russia city outside of like the, the uh, independent people's republics, okay? Or whose bodies haven't been found. Every day, missiles are falling on the city. Despite this, Volodymyr Gorbachev, the head of Kharkiv's rescue service and his team, continue to risk their lives to find survivors. After that, the roof slabs on the fourth and fifth floor fell on the third floor. You believe that there's somebody who's trapped on the fourth floor? How did you find out about this person? По информации ее сына, сына, она находилась в момент попадания бомбы или ракеты в его дома не было. Все, окей, пойдемте наверх. Скажите, аккуратно, везде стекла разбиты. What is your aim here and how long is it going to take? 
все зависит от того, что не будет ли воздушный so many people have left this city holy shit that's crazy that is insane it just goes to show you like how immediate that shit was you know what i mean the bombing occurred literally like as as people were just like living their normal lives you know ever something that you considered fleeing from this war this, this is my town we have to help we're an emergency service no one will help, but we don't. You're speaking to me in Russian, not Ukrainian. This city yeah. has a historical relationship with Russia. What is your feeling towards Russia now? Frankly, I don't want to think about them. They did this to our city, our Ukraine. Here, there's a body coming up. People close to each other nationally and spiritually don't do this. He's right. We have nothing in common now. By the way, this... What he is explaining is exactly what I was saying about Kharkiv uh, when they first started bombing it, when they first started shelling it. And this is also part of the reason why I tell you all the fucking time to like not listen to the... I mean, obviously, it's like super, super fucking far uh, to... Uh, you know, there's super... There's a tiny, tiny, insignificant, inconsequential fraction of the people uh, out there that, that, you know, try to defend uh, Putin. It's not like a large pocket of the left or anything like that um but if you are one of those people that like seeks that information out uh i urge you to understand that this is like horrifying and and completely untrue could not be further from the truth oh jesus they just straight showed the fucking frozen dead grandmother dude yikes vice This is 73-year-old Natalia Belenko. She's straight up Gorbikov's frozen. Gorbachev's team now has to break the news to her son. We found your mother. We found the documents. I know I'm full Victims screen. Victims of Russian attacks like Natalia Belenko are being taken to city morgues. There's more dead bodies. So bodies are being stored outside. Some are being left for days because their families have either fled or are too scared to There's just to dead bodies them. on the roads, dude. I can't show you any of this. There's just rows and rows of bodies here and there's even more in the basement. Plus, you don't want to see any of this anyway. There's just like straight fucking... There are straight up dead bodies frozen on the side of the fucking roads, man. You don't want to see that. I promise. They just are showing dead bodies on the side of the fucking roads for a minute straight. The vast majority that we're seeing civilians are awesome some soldiers as well. And we know that there were a lot- Did they not show that shit in the reality of war be shown or am I tripping? No, I don't. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Like you can get the point across by just saying there are fucking dead bodies everywhere. You don't have to literally see fucking frozen toes and shit sticking out of a goddamn bag, dude. It's literally war porn. A lot more inside. Even in their death, they can't escape this war because we can constantly hear the sound of incoming an outgoing fire as well. The strikes kept getting louder and closer. They're still, literally still showing dead bodies. Like, up until this moment. Just only dead bodies. Okay, I think it's good now. From here on out. We've just had to run inside because... Of a huge explosion outside, we don't know what it is. Two members of Ukraine's Territorial Defense Force were killed in the attack. Rescue crews removed still burning rubble to try and find victims. <laughs> Rigging shackles. Ukrainian military commanders say they can hold off ground troops. People whose only exposure to war is movies and video games get value from seeing the gore, fear, suffering, and horror of war IRL. Not everyone is in touch as you are. 
I don't know, man. I've seen too much of this shit. I don't, I don't think it's good to see it. I think it's disrespectful to the victims, too. Why would you disrespect someone so horribly? They're literally dead. They're dead, and you're showing their dead body be carried. You know what I mean? Would you, would you want your mother, would you want the entire planet to be able to see her in her last moment, in her weakest moment, just fucking frozen, being carried out with all of her clothes and everything, like, or even if she doesn't have clothes, it's like... These are human beings, man. These aren't fucking props. You know what I mean? Brother, they don't... There's a reason why Americans don't show caskets. I don't know if you guys know this, but we don't even show the caskets of dead soldiers coming home. There's a fucking reason why in the United States of America, we stop showing caskets of fucking soldiers. Part of the reason is because they don't want you to understand the human toll of it, certainly. Though I do see that side of the argument when you're, man when you're mentioning like showing dead bodies but also because it's like when you fully consider in american media human beings as like whole human beings and not just props you never show them in their worst moments it's disrespectful you don't see americans in this position usually you don't really see this shit but the region is being pummeled by russian artillery and air power but right now russia is trying to encircle the city it's trying to surround the city how far are they getting? Kharkov, по-прежнему находится не в окружении. Kharkov is not surrounded. So we're fighting. So we're fighting and actually doing okay on the front line. Ситуация на фронте вполне нормальная. Русские уничтожают город. The Russians destroy the city because they cannot do anything else. They cannot occupy it on the ground. Взять суши, поэтому на земле, поэтому они бьют по городу целенаправленно, уничтожают этот город. Какая итоговая цель? Я не представляю. What is the biggest threat that you're facing right now? Это самая большая проблема это ракетные удары. Our biggest problem is rocket strikes. This is why we're asking our Western partners to close the sky. Партнеров на Западе закрыть небо Украины, потому что все, что происходит на земле, мы успешно справляемся. We can handle Russia's land forces. Войсками и с нами правда, поэтому. The truth is on our side. Everything will be fine. There's more uh, wounded people here that they're going to show in a second. Okay, that's not that bad. It's just a guy with his leg this fucked up. This hospital is one of the closest to the front line. We're only 30 kilometers away from Russia. A lot of the injured civilians and soldiers are brought here. And as well as front line medics having to deal with that, we can also hear constant shelling in the background. In fact, this hospital in Kharkiv is so close to the fighting Medics here can see rocket fire if they look out the window. With Russia attacking hospitals in other cities, patients here are being kept in corridors because they offer more protection. This woman was in an attack that killed her sister and son. She says she had to carry his remains down eight flights of stairs. Can you explain to me what happened to you? Christ. My 21-year-old son hugged me in the morning and said, Mom, don't be afraid, it will be okay. My sister, a beautiful 37-year-old. My son, my boy. He was just torn into pieces in front of my eyes. I just carried him like this, covered in blood. Please do something, you can't be like this. Can you talk me through how you lost your leg? I went to the shop while it was quiet, so I stood in line. Like, there's... So, notice how I don't have a problem with them showing this amputation. Because there is a... There is consent. You get to see the human toll very easily with what that lady just described. You get to see the human toll very easily with this old lady. You don't need to see every fucking body in a body bag be able to understand it that's the difference this is what the tank is on the online left support by the way shut the fuck up dude there's like eight people that support this you are brain broken into thinking that they are broadly representative of anything else yeah those people are fucking idiots unironically every the reason why i don't even talk about it is because all they're looking for is literally clout so stop giving them the fucking dumbass clout okay you're, you're just straight up giving into their their interests because they don't give a fuck about russia or they don't give a fuck about ukraine they just care about cloud. They care, they want to fucking they want to maintain prominence. Okay, they switch over their points of view like the seasons. Okay, 
There's new arcs for their POV every fucking goddamn week. You know where people stand on issues, okay? But ultimately, there's like three of them. Why are you so desperate to be like, I'm different. I'm a good leftist. I'm different than those guys. No one cares about those people, okay? <laughs> I want peace everywhere. I want peaceful people to die in the shelling. I don't want peaceful people to die in the shelling. Kharkiv used to be a great city. I can't even describe it. So beautiful. We were free and did what we wanted. Yes, I believe I'll have freedom again. I'm confident we'll win. Our boys will stand their ground. There's a kid going into surgery. If anything changed from yesterday, it's because I don't like how it's looking. Dima Kasyanov was injured in a Russian rocket strike, which damaged his brain. Heat from the explosion has also hurt his lungs and stomach. He's currently being kept in a coma. Dr. Alexandra Dukovsky keeps the boy's mother informed of the results of a brain scan. We can't wait any longer. That's why we're going Dukovsky to go into the skull chief now. Pediatric surgeon. He's been living at the hospital since the bombardments began. A rocket struck his flat during the attack. It was in the center of the explosion. Okay, that's enough, dude. Jesus Christ. In the base of his skull. That's in his they, they show the shrapnel in the base of his fucking skull. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, that you can see. That you should see. When this rocket fragment got through the soft tissue, it got to the carotid, carotid artery and damaged it. That's why we couldn't operate him on him immediately. That's why we couldn't, because it would endanger his life. We will have to conduct a decompressive cranial drilling. We need to reduce the pressure on the healthy parts of his brain. Are you afraid? It breaks my heart. As a mama, I am crushed seeing the hurt for all these kids and that. Sorry. It's okay. Sorry. It's okay. I read me Kharkiv. But we'll win. Glory to Ukraine. Despite Dukovsky's best efforts, Dima died a few days later. He was eight years old. That's why, this is why we're killed, anti war. Natalia Belenko's family are finally able to hold a funeral. This war has been so unpredictable, and no one knows how it's going to end, but the one thing we do know is that it's the poorest and the most vulnerable who will suffer the most. And there'll be many, many more victims. Timur Belenko, Natalia's son, lived just across the road from her. How would you like your mother to be remembered? He always helped others, people always called her. Asking for advice, sisters, sisters brothers. Getting used to it. I used to talk to her every morning and evening. If I had seen her right away, but how? But I didn't. And she laid there for how long? Ten days? For ten days. Can you explain to the world why people in Kharkiv are staying in their homes? They think that they won't get hit. Some children leave them, they say. 
Yeah, you young people should go, and everyone leaves. No, but all the retirees sit at home. At home. Ждут какой-то помощи, they может, help and think the war might be ending. закончится война. Ну и мама тоже. My mom did too. Не боялась, не боялась, так прилетела. Ну, в двух словах. Wasn't afraid and she got How hit. do you feel towards Russia right now? У всех там, боже, там с санкциями разными. Что они тоже похлебают, то, что мы хлебаем. То, что они бросают своих людей. Their mothers don't even know they <coughs> went to fight in a war. Residents of Kharkiv who've been left here have moved into metro stations, which are also bomb shelters. Parents, fearing for their children's safety, have taken them underground. Alona Artmenko is living inside a train after her home was hit. Is this everything that you brought from your house? By the way, when that happens to your family, of course you're going to fucking join whoever the fuck you can find that's going to give you a gun, okay? You, I hope you understand that. And the reason why is because this kind of coverage, I'm sorry to admit this, but almost never ever is extended to the people in Afghanistan, the people in Yemen, people in Syria, to the people in Iraq. So understand that this is not an issue when we talk about like terror. Understand that those people, they have nothing. They have even less than the Ukrainian people have in this situation because at least the Ukrainian people have allyship with the rest of the modern world with the rest of the western world those people have nowhere to fucking go perhaps this will this this will be an opportunity for you to better recognize and have a more serious anti-war anti-imperialist perspective when you watch this okay we'll get a better sense of what palestinians go through when you see this there's still people you know where is Ukraine allies? Where? The entirety of the planet is aligned with Ukraine. The entirety of the Western world is aligned with Ukraine. What the fuck do you mean? I mean, they're using Western weapons against Russia. They're able to evacuate into uh, Western countries that uh, are protected. What the fuck are you talking about? I remember a Taliban commander saying that I don't need propaganda when an American drone hits a village of 30 people come to me willingly because they lost their relatives. America does the propaganda for me. Yep. Yeah. That's why the Taliban, despite being fucking ripped to shreds by the American American military for 20 years kept picking up numbers they kept increasing in size even though they had fuckload of casualties how do you think that happened that's why from the jump my first fucking fear immediately was the moment that russia invades ukraine it's over first day of the invasion i tweeted something like you know you're it's over it's, it's going to be so much death and destruction obviously first and foremost in the hands of russians all that blood is on their hands, uh, on Vladimir Putin specifically. But the secondary consequence of that is also going to be people seeing the most reactionary nationalist forces as em as emancipatory forces, like forces of liberation, an, an endless cycle of violence that seemingly has no immediate or no long-term solution even. Every day that goes by where there is no negotiations, there's no secession of fighting, it's every like day that, that happens, it, it's going to get worse. That's another bombers, two years. There's another year on, on lapse of violence that will overtake Ukraine in the aftermath. And the fucking dumbasses that compare this to Crimea are so disgusting because this did not happen in Crimea, you fucking idiot. Kharkiv is a pretty fucking favorable uh, to Russia city, okay? It's a, pro, it's a pretty pro-Russia city. I just showed you 15 minutes of fucking people, Russian speakers in Kharkiv, uh, disgusted with the violence that they're experiencing. And if your first opinion is like, it was, yeah, it was, it was, yes. If you think that this is in any way comparable to Crimea, you're doing a disservice to the people in Kharkiv, okay? But you can't recognize it. Shut the fuck up. Yes, <laughs> Is that your cap? Yeah. Can you take me back to that night when the, the war started? You were saying it's over. You're not saying it's over. You were saying it's not happening ever. Don't act like you predicted the future. The type of brain cancer that these fucking idiots have is literally stopping them from understanding anything I'll ever say, I think. First and foremost, even if I literally was like, 
even if your assessment is true, which it isn't, because you completely failed to understand that the reason I said Russia would never fucking invade Ukraine is quite literally this, what's happening right now, that it would be the dumbest strategic thing for Russia to do. It would be incredibly violent, the occupation would be bloody and brutal, and they would get their shit pushed in. Because 44 million people with a history of sovereignty and wanting sovereignty, regardless of however many fucking people you think are going to be pro-Russia in that country, are 100% going to turn on you. And there's going to be a counterinsurgency. I've been saying this since the jump. Even that fucking famous Twitch, that uh, a famous Twitter tweet that people love pointing at, where I said, I'll stuff. die on this hill. That literally features every single prediction that is correct and, and as to why my conclusion was that uh, Russia would not invade Ukraine. My conclusion was wrong, but every premise as to why I arrived at that conclusion has played out in front of our fucking eyes. And it doesn't even matter, even if I was completely in the wrong. Two months later, that's all you care about? Whether I was right or wrong? What's wrong with you? It doesn't matter whether I was right or wrong. Russia. Fuck, man. People are going to keep baiting on him every single day with this, aren't they? Yeah, this is the last... Uh, this Today, hopefully, this will be the last time we talk about it. You literally always talk about whether you were right or wrong, and that's what triggers you the most, lol? Yes, because people try to undermine the, the analysis that I'm offering here. I wonder why that fucking upsets me. Yeah, I should just let people lie and, and say that my positions were completely fucking uh, idiotic instead, even if, I, even if they're correct. How is this any different than... How is this literally any different? You're doing the thing. How is this any different than just take this L? Just take the L, bro. Come on. People saying take the L over and over again. It's completely unrelated to the conversation that we're having right now. I need everyone to understand. The reason why I'm banning these subs are, is because they are literally selfish. Not only was my assessment correct and we're watching it unfold, I've also apologized for it. And if they're still fucking trying to whip me in the head over it, that's because they are selfish. They want to center themselves around this conversation. And the reason why I'm banning them is not because, oh, I'm getting pushback or, you know, constructive criticism. The reason why I'm banning them is because if I didn't ban them, we would have this conversation over and over again. This part is for you going forward. I would much rather spend time telling you that the top of the hour was upon us 30 minutes ago. Here's a one minute ad break now. Bro, I'm from Kiev and you did nothing wrong. That's the other thing. Like, fucking Zelensky and people in Ukraine uh, is, is what I was uh, operating my assessment off of, too. There were plenty of fucking Ukrainians. The majority of Ukrainians didn't think that this was going to happen. And it's so fucking incredible. You can watch 15 minutes of people being brutalized by this violent occupation uh, occupational force. And your immediate goal is, how do I get this streamer to be angry at my fucking chatter? Oh, uh, at, my, at my chat. Поняли, что это война, и мы собрали то, что могли, и спустились в метро. На третий день это случилось. К нам прилетела бомба. Это все, дома больше нет. We have no home now, so we're living here now. Так мы здесь вот и живем. Дочка наша была в квартире, она пошла там кое-какие вещи собрать. Ее первой волной накрыла, и немножко ранее. So the first wave hit her, she got a bit wounded with a glass. Ну, слава богу, она выжила. Thank God she's alive. After days in the shelter, Eleanor Asmenko went to see what was left of her apartment. Oh my God, the destruction in front of us is just unbelievable. The kids' room. There aren't any doors or windows anymore. Everything is broken here too. What goes through your mind when you see what's happened to your home? I don't know how to explain it. I feel pain, I feel pain each time I return here. I grew up here. My kids grew up here also. I don't even have anger, just pain, just void. Do you think you'll ever be able to return here to your home and live here? 
Нам бы очень хотелось, но... We'd like to, but perhaps this house can't be repaired. Interview people chosen by Vice, man, I'm not saying they love Russia or whatever, but we can't sit here and say Russia equals propaganda, but this is totally objective. No, of course this is not objective. This is Vice. Of course they're doing uh, uh, propaganda at the behest of Western interests. But it doesn't fucking matter because it doesn't take away from the reality, dude. What do you mean? Like, I mean, this is real. This is very fucking real for these people, okay? And this assessment is not unique to just me. There are even, like, Russian analysts who see this and recognize this, okay? There are people that you probably also rely on, like Mark Ames and whatnot, that also recognize this and talk about it regularly. This is, it's crazy to just, you know, say, oh, this is propaganda. What, what difference does it make? Yes, it's propaganda, but it's also fucking real. It's like, don't turn into one of those liberals who says, oh, as of Nazis, well, it's real, but it's Russian propaganda to talk about it. Like, what the fuck do you mean? Why are you turning into the exact same thing that you rightfully criticize liberals for doing? You know what I mean? Of course, of course there's propaganda here. Of course, they're doing war propaganda. Okay, so that was... Um that was some of it. Um, that was some of what was going on. We're not going to do Clarence Thomas yet. How is it propaganda? Guys, not all propaganda is bad, okay? Like, you can have... I do propaganda. I do agitated propaganda, for example, okay? When I say this is propaganda, I mean, like, this is on the... Clearly on the Ukrainian side, and also on the Western side, more importantly than the Ukrainian side. If Ukrainians were not of interest to the West, they would not get this kind of coverage. Let's be real. Okay?